All right, everybody, we're back together today to start talking about graph mapping and portraiture. Portraiture is a picture of someone, plain and simple. And graph mapping is a technique that I'm going to teach you to get what you see in that portrait onto a piece of paper. So let's talk a little bit first about what type of picture is a good picture for doing a portrait. This one here. A lot of crazy business going on in here, and it's zoomed out a little bit more. We're going to have all these little features with not a whole lot of reference points in our grid to map them out. So this is a little bit more of an advanced picture. This one here, straight on view, which is the easiest one to draw. But if I were going to give a critique of this for this drawing exercise, I would say that a lot of the detail in this is rather dark and that we're going to have a hard time trying to figure out individual features. This one here I have because I wanted to show you a comparison. This is the same guy, we have Prince here, but this over here on my right is a much better picture for a portrait. This one over here on the left is a good picture, but we have a lot of detail that's missing in the hair. We have a pretty flat value in the face. Whereas if we start to look at this one over here, we have a good range of value. The details are all sharp. So out of these two pictures, this one would be the one that I would choose for a portrait. So with that being said, we start to take a look at some of these other samples. We have Adam West Batman here. Everything's very clear and sharp in the picture. We have a good range of light to dark, good shadows, good highlights. This would be an excellent candidate for a portrait. So with that all out of the way, we're going to take a look at this fella here today and we're going to draw him. And the way that we're going to start is we're going to take, I have made this picture four and a half by six inches, very specific size. And then I put a half inch grid on it. And when I put the half inch grid on it, I start at the top and I measure every half inch down. And then I do it again from the top over here and connect those together. Then take this, turn it, and do that same thing. That way, if you end up with like a little sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch longer in the width or the height, it's on the same end of the paper. So if we start at the same end of the paper each time to draw our grid, we don't end up with a crooked grid because we had an eighth of an inch of real estate down here at the bottom that was extra. It ends up all being at the same end. So... I've put the grid on here at a half inch, and this paper here is nine by 12, which is exactly double of what this picture here is. So my half inch grid had to become a one inch grid over here because we've doubled the size of the picture plane, we have to double the size of the boxes. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing this in class, I like to use an 18 by 24 sheet of paper, which is too big for me to get onto the video here. So I'm using a smaller one, but when I'm using something four times bigger, this is 18 by 24, which is exactly four times bigger than four and a half by six. So I've put a two inch grid on this. It's just blowing up the whole grid and blowing up the whole picture. So with that, let's go ahead and let's get started here. Cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to, now that we've broke this picture down into different planes, we're gonna start to figure out where everything on this picture goes based on these squares. So if I count over one, two, three, four, five, six, I see three, four, five, six, that right here, just on this side of this square is the point of that helmet. And I'm gonna start to bring that down to where it almost touches this corner. Now look at this shape and look at this shape. Does it look correct? If it does, you're ready to move to the next one, which goes right down to this corner right here. Do this light. This one comes down to the middle of the next box in the third square. So we know this has to start here and come up like this. This is just gonna give you a rough idea of everything that's going in this picture. I'm gonna look at this shape, I'm gonna look at this shape. I'm not gonna worry about this one for now because when I'm doing portraiture, I try to do all my big areas first and then I spiral down into the small parts because if I spend a half hour on this eyeball and nothing else is correct, I've wasted my time. So let's go back up here and let's look at this shape, but I wanna look at this one too because that's the one that's gonna tell me where this really needs to go. So I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna start to come down from here. Then I'm gonna check this shape and this shape against each other. 
and it looks like this needs to come down just a hair. I'm gonna keep adjusting as I go because I'm not going to just map it in. Now let's take a look at this negative space right here because that's the next guy that I'm going to map in. And then it's gonna come down across this corner like this. And then we see that we have this next one here. I'm gonna look at this negative shape and reproduce it. And we're just gonna keep going right on down the line here. And it's this guy, and then we're gonna come in here. All right, let's head on back over to this side here so we can kind of keep up with what we're doing on the other side and reproduce these shapes right here. One, two, three, four is the bottom. One, two, three, four. So I know how many of those I have to have because they're all similar in shape until we get down to right here. And then I'm gonna come back over to this guy and we're gonna get him in as well. And now I'm gonna come back up to the point of this helmet right here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, five. So here's my point box that I'm going to start that helmet shape in. Go back and check all of these negative spaces. All right, so I've got my helmet shape in here. Let's start to get the big shape of the head in here as well. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna start to get some of this shirt detail in here. Not gonna worry too much about the detail yet because I still have a lot of stuff to get on here as far as my big features are concerned. Just gonna put the end of this buckle on here for now. I'll come back and get that detail in. Let's go ahead and take a look up here and we can see that we're going to start to get some of this brow in here. We 
can start to look one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, two. And that is where I'm going to start to get this feature in as well. Now on the nose, I'm going to look at this where it connects right up here and where I have that negative space. Now noses always end up looking big until we start to get them shaded because we see four planes simultaneously. We have the top, sides, and bottom. helps me figure out where I'm going to start pulling this down from. We start to look at the mouth. Get the bottom lip in here next. start to take a look at the beard here one two three I'm still just looking at my negative and my positive shapes here Double checking both of these against the picture. It looks like we're doing pretty good, so we're gonna keep on going. Now that we have all these players on the board, we can start to figure out, here's a strap. down to here. All right, I've got all the big players on the board here. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is starting to figure out where we want those eyeballs. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So we see that where this brow comes across here, this also is going to And 
I also see that my brow has to come down considerably here from where I had it mapped in originally. So you're gonna be making adjustments to this as you go. But this still helps to break things down into bite-sized shapes. So we're starting to get everything mapped in here a little bit. Not worried a whole lot about detail yet. Just trying to get everything on the board here and I'm gonna work around a little bit. Now I'm gonna start to take a look at this right here. The more you get on, the easier it gets. On this one, I'm gonna look at that shape and that shape to know I'm in the right place. start to figure out where some of these lines on the face are going so that it starts to look a little bit more realistic. And this is kind of where I start to clean things up. It doesn't necessarily have to be everything perfect off the grid now because we have a pretty good idea what we're doing, although I'm still using it to figure out where a lot of this stuff's going to go. So we've got the gist of this thing drawn out here now, and we will get back together at some point here soon and start talking about how we're going to finish this out. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work for just a few more minutes here so you can see kind of what I'm doing. And then if we have any questions, I'll go ahead and I will have you guys give me a holler via email and we'll figure them out for you. Now that I've got all the major players on the board here, it really comes down to the matter of starting to get everything the way I want it. And we're gonna get some of the facial things on here that are gonna make this look a little bit more realistic. All right, and so there's my sketch for the first stage of this. We'll get back together when we start talking about how to finish this drawing. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend a little bit of time working on this here, and then we'll get back together and talk about how to start shading this in. Any questions, holler at me.